Hi, I'm Gene with Enjoy Beekeeping and welcome to another edition. Today my buddy Ruffles, he's a Bernese Mountain Dog, uh, Ruffles and I went out installing swarm traps so he had a little adventure day that I want to tell you about. We're actually at the end of our installation date and um, Ruffles was not overly thrilled about getting in the truck. Um, he's a young guy, he's only 13 weeks old and every time I'd you know, say, come on, open the door and it's time to get in, he really didn't want to get in, but he enjoyed going for the ride once he got in and he enjoyed meeting all the people that we got to talk to today because everywhere that I hang my swarm traps, I know the people. And so it makes it really easy for when I catch a swarm because they just send me a text with a picture, sometimes a video, and they'll show me, hey, guess what? You got some bees. So it's March 7th here in Northeast Georgia. I'm in climate zone number eight. And wherever you are for your climate zone, uh, beekeeping is always a little bit different. So you have to kind of dial into it. But here's a couple clues that'll help you get your swarm traps out in time. So the first thing that blooms here in Northeast Georgia are the daffodils. And as soon as they pop up, well, that's my cue that I need to put swarm traps out in all the trees, especially the ones that I've already caught swarms in the year before. And it's amazing that the bees can remember to go back to that same tree every year. Um, there's only been one or two cases where the, the tree that I've hung it in uh, doesn't catch uh, a swarm sequentially, one year after another after another. Um, there's, there's trees that I catch uh, swarms now for probably going on six, six or seven years. And um, every time I catch a swarm, I always bring a jar of honey to the homeowner because they're so nice to let me uh, hang the swarm traps up on their property. And then they always keep in touch with me by phone by sending me a video or a text message. And I just put my phone number right on the front of the swarm trap so they can send me the picture when I get the bees. And um, a buddy of mine, we stopped over uh, we had a lot. We started early today. We started probably about nine o'clock. Um, I probably could have got started sooner, but I didn't have my truck loaded yet. But I got my truck all loaded up and uh, Ruffles came with me and we made several stops. And one of them, um, we stopped at my friend's house where I just didn't get to the swarm trap in time to take down from last year. I, I try not to leave them up all over the winter time. Well, anyway, we get there and this one had been hanging all winter long too. And sure enough, there's bees about to take this swarm trap. So those first blooms, and for, for me in my region, it's the daffodils. It might be something different where you are, but just watch for those first blooms. And if you already have bees in your apiary, or if you've got a few hives going, I don't know how many you might have, but if you see activity outside your hive, and I'm talking about bearding, um, it's early, it's early for us here in Northeast Georgia, but we're already getting bearding. Now here's a couple of my 14 frame Layens hives, and they're just the traditional two by dimensional lumber. And uh, I'm already getting bearding. Now it's not that it's hot, it's only about 72 degrees. So it's not because it's hot outside, but what's going on is a uh, couple things. Number one, I think this is probably the biggest factor right now, this week, is the fact that I've got a hive beetle entrance um, baffle. It's not really a trap, it's a baffle that makes hive beetles uh, very confused. They, they have a hard time getting inside of my beehives. And hive beetles, for me, is my number one adversary. I cannot stand them things, but if you're in uh, the south region like we are, uh, you can get overrun with them. And usually if I lose a colony, it's because of hive beetles. Uh, Varroa mites, no big deal. Um, other pathogens, not so much because the way I manage my bees is a lot like the way the bees would manage themselves in the wild. And this is so cool. You're, you're probably gonna have a hard time believing this, but I'm in my hives once a year now. And my favorite time of year to go in and get them I harvest my honey and prep them for spring all at the same time, and that's February. And this year I had a really 
awesome honey harvest that I want to show you after I go through a couple more of these signs with you. Um, so February has become my new favorite time of year. A um, couple other indicators. Okay, so one is the, uh, the early blooms for your region. Number two, the activity outside the hive. So if you see a lot of bees starting to group up or beard, this that's not really a beard um, I, that you're looking at on these, but they're, they're grouping up. Uh, a beard usually hangs down below, but anyway, if you want to get technical. But the fact that there's so many bees on the outside of the hive, there's two things going on. Number one, it's the um, hive beetle baffle. The other thing is that they are already hatching uh, their first wave of brood, and they're already starting, to, the queen's already laying her second wave. Um, so they are building up super fast. So two things are happening simultaneously. If I took that hive beetle baffle off, you wouldn't see nearly as many bees on the outside. Um, but probably in another week, after all that cat brood starts hatching that's already in there, uh, that I just saw not too long ago. Um, like I said, I was just in them about two weeks ago when I harvested honey. And so another thing that you want to watch for as the weather starts to get warm, this is number three, um, you want to watch for the weather systems that move in and out. So what I'm talking about is if a rain system moves into your area and it rains for two or three days or whatever, uh, and then it moves out and today is sunny and beautiful and that's when you're going to catch swarms. It's just like clockwork. Every time a system moves out of the area, and the sun pops back out, you're gonna catch swarms and the prime time to catch them um, that I've noticed is about 9.30 in the morning till about four in the afternoon. And of course, they, the bees will make a liar out of me and swarm at 5.30 in the evening or whatever, but I usually see them uh, early to mid morning. That's the most popular time. I've seen them go as late as two and three in the afternoon. Usually after that, um, they'll wait till the next day but always watch for them after that weather system moves in or out of your area. So make sure you get your swarm traps up early. Watch for those early blooms. And then uh, you can have a victory, just like Ruffles and I today, where we actually came upon one of our winter uh, swarm traps. It wasn't supposed to stay there all winter long, but it wound up being there just because I couldn't get to it. And uh, I'm gonna see if Ruffles would like to enjoy another one of his Victory Doritos. Now we stopped over at uh, the Ace Hardware and all the girls love Ruffles and they gave him some dog treats. Um, he wasn't real big on them, but I stopped on our way home and I got him a couple of party size bags of Doritos and he seems to really like them. Ruffles, would you like a Dorito? There you go, buddy. Yeah, they're a hit with him, he loves them. All right, well, that's our victory for today. The next victory is gonna be when we start getting the text messages in and people start showing us all the swarms that we're catching. So Ruffles will probably join me on that adventure next. You don't drink kombucha, just who, do you? That's for me. You want another Dorito? I'll get you another Dorito. Now Ruffles is gonna be about 100 pounds when he gets big. Now he's only, come here, right here. This is the spot, sit. That's it, good boy. All right, there you go. So Ruffles, I'm thinking he's about 45. I haven't weighed him. I gotta get on the scale and, and uh, then pick him up in order to check him out. But I think, he, if I had to guess, he's about 45 pounds. He's 13 weeks old and uh, he is the most affectionate little guy I've ever met. Anyway, I'm so excited about him. I had to include him in the video. Maybe you'll see more of him in the future. Um, the Bernese Mountain Dog is a very affectionate dog. First timers, family dogs, they are awesome. I've had dogs my whole life and I've never had one with a personality like his. And the minute I met this little guy, he came running out of the house and he come right over to me. We were like instant pals. So he's been uh, joining me on the adventures that I'll, I'll be sharing with you throughout the spring. Sit. Good boy. Sit. Oh, there's, oh, he, he wants the Doritos. So this really cheered him up as we were out driving around. Cause like I was telling you before, I had trouble getting him into the truck today and uh, he really didn't want to go. Um, but after I bought that bag of Doritos, that was after our last stop, I think we're going to be able to have a lot more adventures if I bring Doritos with me.
There you go. Not too bad, huh? That's it for today's episode of Enjoy Beekeeping. I hope you enjoyed uh, meeting my new buddy, Ruffles, and we'll see you in the next video.